So this has been a pretty challenging year this year for wheat. I'm guessing there's a few of you that have probably had to till up some fields this year. Maybe a few. Yeah, um, we actually had a fairly uh, good stand here. We uh, basically had this wheat planted on October 2nd. Things looked pretty good in the fall, came back in the spring and things weren't, weren't as pretty as they should have been, right? So um, a couple of things that we've done out here is we actually have a study that's looking at fall versus spring applications of various herbicides that are commonly used in wheat. And the kind of the twist to this one is this uh, wheat has been frost seeded with clover. Um, the clover was frost seeded in April, which you would think is pretty late, but you think about what kind of winter we had, it kind of hung on for quite a while. Um, so we had, what was actually put out here was a mixture of uh, medium red clover and also uh, mammoth clover. Uh, we would generally recommend medium red clover. A lot of times with the mammoth clover, you can actually see it take over the wheat. And you might have, if you took a look at any of Kurt's plots, you're going to see that that clover is getting fairly tall, very close to those uh, wheat heads, and that can be an issue. So what we wanted to do is actually see what effect those herbicide applications had on that clover. Because as we start Moving forward, there's a lot of people that are wanting to use a lot more cover crops, and this is one that uh, a lot of people want to use. Basically, from spring applications, the only herbicide that is labeled is actually MCPA, in which clover is going to be able to survive. And if you take a look at these plots, you're basically going to see that still, MCPA is the only one that you can apply in the spring. However, with fall applications, We've looked at a few different herbicides, and the clover is still living um, from that frost-seeded clover from those fall herbicide applications. All the fall herbicide applications were made in November, um, basically when the wheat was at the two-leaf stage. And the main reason we're looking at some of these fall applications is some of the different weed problems that we have, we can actually clean some of those problems up with fall applications. So for example, um, over the last two years, we had done quite a bit of work looking at common wind grass control. And in fact, this is kind of an adult common wind grass. If anybody wants to come take a look a little bit later, you can take uh, a quick look at this. Wind grass actually comes up in the fall about the same time as wheat. It's got a very thin uh, leaf and it's very small. When it first comes up, it's kind of thread-like. And as it continues to grow, you see um, that the ligule, basically where the leaf is attached to the stem, is um, it's membranous, so it's clear, it's long, and it's jagged. And basically, most of our wind grass is going to come up, come up in the fall. And from some of our work, we found that ap fall applications of either PowerFlex or Osprey have done very good at controlling common wind grass in the fall and basically is held through to the spring. So that's one of the reasons we're looking at some of these fall applications. A couple other herbicides that are really commonly used in wheat um, are things like Affinity Broadspec and also Husky. We wanted to see what effect those um, herbicide applications in the fall have on frost seeded clover. Um, Clarity is another herbicide that we can apply in the fall, so we wanted to see if basically we could frost seed clover after a Clarity application. Uh, we also looked at 2,4-D. 2,4-D is not labeled for fall applications, and in general, we do not want to use it in the fall. One of the main reasons for this is we can have some issues with um, wheat development, and uh, we have seen that before where there's been a lot of fields that have been applied in the fall, with 2,4-D and have had some uh, yield issues further down the road. So again, the 2,4-D is just kind of as a comparison to the spring, but um, it is not labeled in the fall. So just uh, keep that in mind, but we do have it out here. So when we look at our plots, you're going to see that our fall applications, there is still clover in all those fall applications So, or with any of those herbicides. So that kind of gives us some... Uh, you know, some positives. So we look at it, 
If we have wind grass as a problem, we might use PowerFlex or Osprey. We've got the same stand there. We do see a little bit of stunning from that. And once the wheat comes off, we'll be able to see if that clover can take off. With the Affinity broad spec applications in the fall, we've um, got a nice stand of clover. The clover looks very similar to our untreated. Doesn't look injured at all. The other thing that we did notice from our fall applications of Affinity broad spec as you can see out here, we have a pretty good population of common lambs quarters. In all of our um, affinity plots, uh, the common lambs quarter control is very good, which was very unexpected to me. Uh, one of the reasons is, again, lambs quarters is a spring emerging weed, and we just didn't, wouldn't think that that affinity would hold out long enough to keep that lambs quarter under control. So with one year of data, we've actually saw some pretty good control of the common lambs quarters. Now, keeping that in mind, a lot of the spring weeds that we might have, things like common ragweed, are probably going to be a problem and not going to be controlled by these fall applications. But if you have problems like common chickweed, henbit, a lot of the winter annual weeds, some of these fall applications are going to be pretty good. So if we can basically clean up the weeds, do a frost seeding of clover after these fall applications, we probably would have fairly decent control of some of those weeds because that clover could probably potentially help in our weed control with some of those summer annual weeds, particularly if we have a really good weed st or wheat stand, which um, right here we don't necessarily have this year with some of the issues that we um, had uh, with winter kill. A um, couple other things I wanted to mention. Um, we had a fall application of husky. I think with that, we maybe developed a new clover population or a new clover uh, biotype because if you look in that uh, particular plot, you're going to see clover that has white leaf margins around it. The clover looks fine, but it's kind of showing some of the symptoms from the husky. So um, it looks a little bit different, but we do have the population out there and it seems to be growing okay. So we're seeing a little bit of injury from that. Um, couple other things I want to point out. The very last plot, you're going to see a sign that says uh, spray boom overlap. That was overlap from, there were dry beans out here last year, and um, reflex was applied a little bit later in the season. We had some overlap, and you can get some carryover. So some of the carryover symptomology for wheat is basically you lose stand, okay? So as you go over there, you're going to see that there's some stand gone, and that is basically from uh, reflex carryover that was applied to the wheat, or excuse me, applied to the dry beans. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that you guys that are growing dry beans, reflex is very popular to use because that's basically the only thing we have for common, land, or common ragweed control. And there is a four month rotation restriction to planting winter wheat, which makes it really tough when we start looking at our application window to our planting window. So it can be a problem with carryover from those reflex applications, particularly later in the season and if we're dry. Um, one of the reasons that we're seeing more of this this year is we are very dry later on in the summer. And in order for reflex to break down, we need to have moisture. And with that moisture, um, we also need to have heat. So as we were dry and then we had that early uh, winter where it was cold, that herbicide was not breaking down. And that's why we did see some uh, carryover, particularly in that last plot when there was an overlap. Another thing I wanted to bring out here is we do have a few samples of corn that show some of the symptoms that you might see from reflux carryover. And basically that is uh, venal chlorosis and pretty much a weak midrib. And in some cases you'll see the corn plants twist like this, okay? And this one is probably not gonna be okay, but a lot of times when we do see some of the carryover symptoms, um, the plants can, the corn plants can outgrow it. So just as another indication of some of the things to think about when you're going from one crop to the next, what are some of the challenges that you might have with carryover? One last thing I want to mention is because of the spring that we had with it being wet and then the wheat took off, 
A lot of our herbicide applications did not happen this year. The other thing is with some of the poorer stands, we have a lot of weeds that are gonna be a problem at harvest. Just to mention, we do have some herbicides that are labeled for pre-harvest applications. Things like glyphosate can be used, 2,4-D can be used, Clarity can be used, and also AIM. So we've got those four options that can be used as pre-harvest uh, treatments. Key things to think about, that wheat needs to be in the hard dough stage, okay, number one. And many of those applications can only take place after the seed moisture is 30% or less. So those are the two key things to keep in mind. And most of the pre-harvest intervals are seven days. So um, we're gonna be dealing with a lot of green weeds when we're trying to harvest that wheat. Those pre-harvest uh, applications are probably something that a lot of people are gonna be looking at this year to try to make sure they get those weeds dried down so uh, wheat harvest goes a lot better.